What do 2D platformers, space monkeys, rhythm games, and a set of bongo drums all have in common? That's right, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat was created in 2005 for the Nintendo GameCube, and it plays just like any other Donkey Kong Country game, except for a tiny detail. Instead of a normal controller to play the game, you have a set of bongos. And instead of your typical save the jungle and make your family proud story, Donkey Kong is just beating jungle creatures senselessly so that he can prove to himself that he is the king of the jungle. He also fights a gorilla on a crashing meteor in outer space, a ghost 50 times his size, and actual demons, but we'll get to all that later. For now, the basic premise for Jungle Beat is you play across different kingdoms, and they're each represented by a fruit. Each fruit has two distinct levels, and ends with a boss fight at the end. The first kingdom is the Banana Kingdom, and it's what you would expect from any normal Donkey Kong game, but of course, there's the bongos that you're using instead of a controller. And basically how the bongos work, there are three buttons. The left bongo, the right bongo, and then clapping, which is a microphone at the top of the bongos. Tapping left will make Donkey Kong run left, right goes right, pressing both at the same time will make him jump, and clapping basically does everything else. And encompassed within the everything else category is a little thing called infinite wall clapping. Since clapping is a requirement to play the game, Nintendo thought that it might be a bit annoying to some households and decided to add a sensor setting to the microphone. If set very low, you could clap very quietly and it would work, or if you were playing in a loud environment, you could turn the setting up and it would only pick up loud claps that were right over the sensor. Well, if you set the clap sensor to extremely sensitive and play a very loud noise right over the microphone, Donkey Kong claps basically infinitely fast, which, as most could assume, isn't really understood well by the game as, well, you're not supposed to be able to clap that fast. And in the first level of the Banana Kingdom, once reaching the first dandelion, we can set the microphone sensor to one, backflip onto this wall, and then blow into the sensor, causing Donkey Kong to clap insanely fast, which for some reason increases his speed incredibly, and it just zips us right to the very end of the level, which leads us into the next important part of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. At the end of each level, Donkey Kong gets to acquire some bananas by hitting the bongos as fast as possible. And the reason this is important is that just completing a level in Donkey Kong Jungle isn't actually sufficient to beating the game. At the end of each level, banana totals are tallied, and depending on how many bananas were collected, a certain number of crests will be rewarded. Beating the level at all gives you bronze, 400 bananas will give you silver, 800 gold, and if you manage to somehow collect 1200 bananas, you are rewarded with a platinum crest. So not only is beating a level required, but the fashion in which you do so is equally important. Each unique action Donkey Kong does will add to his combo meter, performing a backflip, jumping off of a wall, ground pounding, any distinct action will add to his meter, which will stay as long as he never hits the ground. And what the combo meter does is that each banana collected will be multiplied by that combo meter. So if you're at a combo meter of 12, killing an enemy that drops five bananas, that's 60 bananas to your total. But the only downside to the combo meter is that the bananas aren't collected into your total until you touch the ground. So let's say you have an insane combo going and are on like 1,000 bananas. If you take damage before landing on the ground, all 1,000 of those bananas are gone. So basically it's like a risk versus reward type scenario. If you have a big combo, you can cancel it in order to store your bananas, but you'll have to build up the combo again for further bananas. And at first the amount of crests you get isn't really that important as one or two crests per kingdom will unlock the following levels. But the final level requires 51 crests, which is an average of a gold crest on every level. So if not planned early, will require us to go back to a ton of kingdoms just to replay them for more bananas. And on top of all of that, after you have collected your bananas for the two levels from each kingdom, you have to face off against a boss, who if it hits you, it will cause you to lose some of your bananas. In Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, there are four main types of bosses. The Kongs, the Hogs, the Tusks, and the Rocks. And at the end of the Banana Kingdom, we face off against the first Kong, Dread Kong, which is basically just a dumbed-down fighting game. All we have to do is dodge Dread Kong's attack, and after he misses, we hit him, and then we combo until he's dead. The next kingdom is the Orange Kingdom, which adds yet another layer to this increasingly complex and confusing game, which is the riding level. And for the entire level, we just hit the right bongo as fast as possible so we can run as fast as we can. There are these giant little critters that I can't even begin to guess what they are, and we just clap and then they'll hide, and we eventually make it to the end where we're given one of the alternate end of level mini games where we can earn some extra bananas. In this game, we just run as fast as we can, jump each gap that we can, and for each gap that we jump, we get 10 extra bananas. The next level we are introduced to the flying squirrel mount that we can glide down with as well as the chicken head on a stick with thorns that we have to piss off and then punch its head once it's angry in order to kill it. 
You know, playing this game as a kid, I never really questioned any of the things that were going on, but having to write down and then read Chicken Head on a Stick with Thorns really makes me stop and think for a second. Anyways, it's on to the bird boss, which is the rock, and it has a big black egg that we just have to clap the dust off of, and then we can eat it in order to kill its mother. Next is the Watermelon Kingdom, which isn't too crazy. We just do some jumping around and have a little mini boss fight that's a pig in a tree throwing melons at us. But all I have to do is catch the melons and kick them back, knocking down the tree. And the next boss is Rogue Hog. All the hog fights consist of them jumping in the air and throwing melons at us. And then they are electrified, so all we do is clap to get the electricity off. And then we hit the melon back into the hog. And then once the hog is down, we just beat him as fast as we can. The next kingdom is the Peach Kingdom, which has a normal platforming level and then an ice level with some chicken on a sticks and some weird fluffy things. But once completing, takes us to the last of the four types of bosses, the Turret Tusk. The Tusk fights are probably my favorite of the bosses. They are these elephant tank type things that shoot bombs and lasers at us. But in order to kill them, we just have to throw a pineapple into their trunk whenever they're inhaling and we cause them to explode. We then throw the remaining pineapples at their heart and we kill them. After killing the Tusk boss, we completed the D barrel of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, which is basically like world one of the game. The next barrel is the K barrel, and it has completely different levels, but the bosses are just difficult variants of the previous ones. Each barrel has a Kong, Rock, Tusk, and Hawk. The next kingdom is the Strawberry Kingdom, and this is one of the first kingdoms where getting a combo is extremely important. We can start the level off by backflipping onto the vine, jumping off of the vine into a wall, and then jumping off the same vine to grab a bird giving us a combo of six. And the rest of the level is all airborne, so every banana for the rest of the level is worth six bananas, assuming we don't ever take any damage and lose everything that we have collected. But by chaining our combos as well as we can on both the first and second levels, after beating the second hog boss, we get our very first platinum crest, which is extremely important to get because without any platinum crest, we have to get gold on every single level in order to have enough at the end of the game. After beating a couple more levels, we reach our first race level in the Lemon Kingdom, which is quite different from most racing levels in platformers. Essentially, we don't have to win. But by winning, we get more bananas, which I guess eventually means if we have won or not, but it won't prevent us from completing the level if we win or lose. And during the race, bananas aren't really a thing, so the only focus is winning the race so that we can get the most bananas possible. So by winning the race, we get 300 bananas and head on to the next level. One thing I haven't mentioned is that while Donkey Kong Jungle Beat is an absurd addition to the Donkey Kong series, I absolutely love this game. The unique take on a platformer making combos and rhythm a huge key to doing well pushes the boundaries of any platformer that I have played to this day, not even just from 2005. It really is a shame that the required bongos basically prevented it from doing well because I think a sequel would be really cool, but I can't blame Nintendo as all of the Donkey Kong mainline games. The second worst selling one was Donkey Kong Country 3 and it sold over 4 million units and then Donkey Kong Jungle Beat sold only around one. So 25% of the second worst performing title of the mainline Donkey Kong games. But we aren't here for numbers, we are here for chicken head on a stick. But what is more exciting than that is the jelly level. Also, I have no clue why Donkey Kong starts each level with a spotlight on him. I don't know if he's like doing a performance or on Broadway. There's curtains that draw as well, so who knows what's going on. All I know is the jelly level is kind of like water levels, but it's in the air, so it's much worse. But thanks to the infinite wall clap, we can slip up this wall, fall right off of the edge, and land in this jelly thousands of feet below, only to reach the end of the level in a couple of seconds. The next level is a labyrinth type level, and we are introduced to the snake tubes, which are just like Mario pipes, but they're much cooler. All we have to do is clap our hands, and they suck us right up and take us somewhere else. But after the snake tubes, we make our way to the pufferfish frog that we rip its tongue out and run to the end of the level to finish off the grape kingdom. We then beat a couple of more kingdoms, enter the lava level, and face off against one of the demon fish. This game, for only having three inputs, did a really good job of the different enemies and bosses in this game. The demon monsters shoot these balls of energy at us, and clapping we can return it right back. The only issue is that each ball of energy won't affect the demon unless it is formed into a meteor. So we have to wait until it's just about to hit us, clap to send it back, and we do this a handful of times, all while it gets faster each time before finally killing the demon. And other than the demon and the pigs and the trees, there are a couple of other sort of semi-bosses in the game that we face every now and then, and one of them is the dancing panda bear, which is basically exactly what it sounds like. The panda bear will spin, do a little dance, and then it gets angry, creates a shockwave, and then we just clap to send it back, and we beat up the panda. The next level we perform another one of those infinite wall claps, and we find ourselves against basically the exact same demon as before, only this time it's in its fish form. We knock it out and then we take it for a ride to end the first level of the Peach Kingdom. We then jump through a couple of snake tubes in the next lava level and face off against another semi-boss, which this time is the Armadillo, which honestly 
I don't really know what it does. I think it's supposed to roll around and then, you know, be an armadillo, but I walk up to it, clap, and it kind of just does the trick. We then have another riding level where we have to kill the salamander train by throwing pineapples at it, and then we enter the first meteor level, which is just as the title suggests, we run along the level and we dodge some meteors. But luckily for us, after the meteor level, we unlock the supposed final boss of the game, which, if you're an astute observer, there is only a D, K, and J barrel for the name Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, but no B barrel, so we'll see if it's the final boss. Either way, the not-so-final boss is the Cactus King, which isn't just a fight. There's a very small level that we have to complete and collect a couple of bananas for health before floating down into the arena. The Cactus King is... Well, I don't know what it is. I've never seen a cactus in Donkey Kong, and I don't know why this guy is the king of them, but either way, he starts off on a flame pig. We clap as fast as we can to put the fire out, kill the pig, and then it's just a one versus one. And in the fight against the Cactus King, it's very similar to the Kong fights, only he is so much taller that we have to get on his level, so we just wall jump up to his height, smack him around a bit, and then for some reason we can just fight him while in midair because, you know, Donkey Kong is the king of the jungle. But we also just sling Cactus King around like a ragdoll and beat him pretty easily. And after defeating the Cactus King, the credits start to roll. But to everyone's surprise, like an after credit scene of a Marvel movie, the game has more to offer. And these last four kingdoms have a very steep increase in difficulty from the previous ones. Well, not this first level. This first one, we're racing against some turtles and we can just use our infinite wall clap to zip right to the end, but the next level is a lot more difficult. It requires us to navigate a huge clock tower on a bird mount, dodging various obstacles, all which can destroy our banana combo, which is really the hardest part about this game. Most of these levels aren't really difficult to beat, but being able to end with a huge stack of bananas requires you to never take any damage for most of all of these final levels, not to mention these kingdoms have the most difficult variation of all the bosses at the end. Of the four bosses that were mentioned earlier, each of them has to be fought four times, and they get more difficult each time. But not to bore you with the same fight that's just a little bit different every time, I only showed the first time that we fought each one. But this is the hog's final form, the Gloat Hog, which takes place on a lava level. The hog also has a dash attack where he can jump in the air and shoot straight to your location, and he can also throw the melons much, much faster than before, and he can also throw spike melons that we can't use to fight back. This boss isn't that hard, but taking damage is much more likely, and since the levels are hard to get bananas as well, it can be a bit annoying if we lose too much to not get a golden crest. The next level is a bird race, only this time there are more birds to race against, and in this race, even if you don't hit any obstacle, you can still lose pretty easily. Without knowing the course and where the boosts are, the opposing birds will just win almost every time. But after playing through a couple times and knowing the route, it's not too hard. We then make it to the final rock boss, Thunder Rock, which is quite the challenge from its first iteration. The platforms are much smaller, and we have to rely on the helper monkeys to get around most of the level. The rock can also shoot dozens of spikes, as well as meteors at us, but similar to before, we clap the dust off the egg and snack on it a bit and beat the final rock. The next kingdom is the Chili Pepper Kingdom, and this kingdom is all about keeping the highest combo you possibly can. There's almost every single type of unique action in this level, so from start to finish, you can get up to a combo of 15, making every single banana huge for the total. The only thing is that each section has mosquitoes or things that can hurt you, so by taking any damage, your banana count will just stay at zero. So basically, in order to do well in the Chili Pepper Kingdom, you can't take damage a single time. And that leads us to the final of the tusk bosses, which is just two tusks, both attacking us at the same time. Only this time the tusks shoot more often, they also shoot lasers very frequently, and really, just by having two of them, they're much harder than the very beginning. We grab the pineapple, throw it into the first one, blow it up, and then the fight is just like the original. And that leads us to the final kingdom of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, the Star Fruit Kingdom, which obviously has to take place in outer space. The level itself isn't insanely difficult. Every small section just has one of the stronger enemies from the past levels, and we just have to basically go through each one that we have faced throughout the kingdom, and once beating, faces us against the final Kong fight of the game, Sumo Kong. And what other battlefield to prove that we are the king of the jungle than a meteor that is hurling straight towards Earth? Sumo Kong is definitely the hardest of the Kong bosses, but as a group are one of the easiest of the four. Similar to before, we dodge Sumo's attack, strike when he is vulnerable, only this time his combos are much more complex than just dodging once and then swinging a ton. But after a couple of dodges and kicks, we take Sumo Kong down and defeat the last of the Kong. Only we are not done yet. After defeating Sumo Kong, we unlock the final level of the game, which requires 51 crests to complete, and if playing casually or if playing without foresight to collect as many bananas as possible, will take a bit of time to go back and collect all those bananas. But collecting 51 crests, the Ghastly King is unlocked. 
And to be quite honest, I don't really know the difference between the Ghastly King and the Cactus King. The fight plays out the exact same way. We just wall jump to get to a head level, sling him around a couple of times, and then slap him up a bit, and then we take him down. And well, that's Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. We just disturbed the peace of an entire jungle and potentially committed a couple of war crimes, but Donkey Kong is indeed the king. And that's the story of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. It's a wacky game that is completely insane, but it's also really fun. And when people say they don't make games like they used to, they really don't. Large studios can't take risks and can't go out on crazy limbs like this, but don't get me wrong. Modern day games are fantastic, but the amount of weirdness that Donkey Kong Jungle Beat provides is something that I personally wished happened a lot more often.